Hey, what's up everybody? This is Tammy. Welcome back to our video tutorial series on beginning Sprite Kit. In this part of the series, you'll learn more about Sprite Kit actions. As you saw in the previous video, actions allow you to manipulate your sprites, but actions can also be used to animate sprites. To run an animation action, you first need to gather a list of images called textures that make up the frames of the animation. A sprite has a texture assigned to it, but you can always swap out the texture with a different one by setting the texture property on the sprite. In fact, this is what animations do for you. They automatically swap out your sprite's textures over time with a slight delay between each. All you need to do is create an array with your textures and then use the method animate with textures, passing in the texture array and the time per frame. Let's jump into the demo and see this in action. The first thing we're going to do is create a constant to hold our SK action, and that will actually be the zombie animation. We're going to do this in the gamescene.swift file. Now that we have a constant to hold our zombie animation, we'll need to create an array to hold the textures for our zombie animation. And we'll do that in the init method. Now that we have our textures array, we need to populate that with the images for our zombie. We'll do this with a simple loop. We're also going to add two additional images at the end, and we'll pull those out of the array that we create. This will give the zombie a smooth animation as he moves. Now that we have our textures array and it's populated, we can go ahead and assign a value to our zombie animation constant. So you can see here on line 56 that we're using the animate with textures and we're passing in our array of textures and the time per frame to create our zombie animation action. Now that we have our action created, we can actually go ahead and run this action on our zombie. And we'll do that in the did move to view function. We'll add this right after we add the zombie to the scene. And of course, this animation of our zombie, we want to run forever, so we're using the repeat action forever action in order to continue to have the zombie animate. Let's build and run and see what we have. So you can see here that the animation is working really well for our zombie. And in fact, it looks really cool when he moves across the screen. It really brings the zombie to life. That's it for this video tutorial. And now we have a challenge waiting for you. Your challenge is to create functions to start and stop the zombie animation. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.